Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would do the new YouTuber slash get to know me tag. Believe it or not you can google these questions so if you see me looking down it's because I'm reading the questions. There's quite a few so I'll get started. So the first question is what is your name and where are you from? So my name's Andrea and I'm from Birmingham. A lot of my viewers are from the US so if you don't already know, Birmingham is the second city here in England. It's about an hour and a half drive from London. Next question is, what is your star sign? My birthday is May the 20th, which makes me a Taurus, which means I can be stubborn. I'm quite strong minded and I definitely don't like being told what to do, unless I'm asking for your help that is. I would say that I'm a very laid back person and quite tolerant of people. However, there's like an invisible line somewhere about here and when people cross it it's like showing red to a ball but that doesn't happen very often one thing i can't stand is when people are rude or disrespectful or just have no manners it doesn't cost anything to be polite and say please and thank you so the next question is how tall are you so i'm five ten and three quarters which is just under five eleven so yeah that's quite tall for a woman and yes i've heard all of the tall jokes I guess I'm quite oddly proportioned because I've got a small body and long legs. My mum and I are the same height but when we sat down I look smaller. It's not until I stand up that people see how tall I am. I've also got big feet as well for a girl. I'm a size 9 or 10 depending on the make of shoe. Don't make fun of me because having big feet means I have more surface area to kick you with. I'm just joking. I guess I have to have something to balance out my height with. I used to find it difficult getting shoes but not so much now. I tend not to wear heels anyway because I'm tall so I mostly wear flats unless I have to wear heels. So the next question is, do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one younger sister. I also have quite a few cousins that I'm close with and some of them are like siblings too. What inspired you to start making YouTube videos? Well, I have a health condition called Crohn's disease which I was diagnosed with at the age of 13 and I talk about it quite openly to lots of people. And they always say how positive I am about my condition. So that's where the idea came from to help other people. I wanted to create awareness and to help other people understand what it's like to live with. As it's an invisible illness and not many people know what it's like to deal with on a daily basis. What's your channel about and how did you come up with the name? My channel is not just about my health condition. It's about anything that inspires me to make a video. So anything that I find interesting. So I'm into makeup and hair as you can probably tell. Nails, anything else, not just my health condition. And how did I come up with the name? I had a few names jotted down and I didn't really like them. And I was searching for something catchy, quick, and I just thought that whatever videos that I made, whatever content I put out, I wanted to be myself in those videos. So then I kind of just went with the name Always Andrea because I'm I'll always be me basically. Who are your favourite YouTubers? Gosh, there's too many to mention them all. So I'll say my two favourite YouTubers from the UK are Tootsie Time and her other channel with her husband Diana and Ahmet and Patricia Bright and her vlog channel as well. Any advice for new YouTubers? Well I still consider myself to be a new YouTuber but I will say if there's something that you're really passionate about and you enjoy doing it then just do it. Don't think about what other people are going to say or might say because there's always going to be someone out there that likes what you're doing. Now I'm a virgin Yes, I am, and by that I don't mean sex. What I mean by that is I don't give a fuck. Now, normally I don't swear, so in other words, I don't care what people say or think about the content that I make because if I'm doing it, it means I've thought about it. And I'm an adult, I'm a good person, and as long as I'm not hurting anyone or breaking the law, I don't see why other people should have bad opinions about the content that I create. I have my own mind and I'll do it regardless of what they say. And if people out there have a problem, there's a simple solution to that. Don't watch my videos. So in terms of YouTube, you have to be thick skinned because there will be people that don't like your content and will comment or let you know. But at the same time, there will be people out there that like what you do as well. So don't let it deter you. Do I have kids? No, I don't. Well, not yet anyway. And that's by choice. When's the last time you cried? Well, my eyes water easily, so I can be coughing, sneezing, tired, yawning, chopping onions, putting contact lenses in, doing my makeup, going out from the warm into the cold. 
but it doesn't take a lot for me to actually cry either so I could be thinking about something or watching an advert. I think the last time I cried was when I was watching the remake of The Old Roots. I think I cried every episode. What's the first thing you notice about people? If I'm standing up it's probably their height, especially if it's a woman and she's taller than me because that doesn't happen often. Yeah I'm gonna say height. What religion, race, nationality or heritage are you? On paper I think I'm Church of England slash Christian but I don't actually practice any religion just because I'm not actually sure what my religious beliefs are. I once had that near-death experience which was very comforting to me but I'll tell you about that another time. So my race is black. My nationality is British as I was born here as were both of my parents and my heritage is Jamaican because all four of my grandparents were born and raised in Jamaica before they came to the UK. Actually my dad was born here, he was raised for a little while in Jamaica then he came here at eight. What's the furthest you've been from home? Uh, I think that's when I went to LA. How many countries have you visited? I never counted. I've been to the Netherlands, Portugal, Cars, Cyprus, Turkey, Egypt, America, Jamaica and I've been on a cruise as well so I don't know if that actually counts but on the cruise we went to the Dominican Republic, the British Virgin Islands, St Kitts, Martinique, Barbados, Dominica, I don't know if I said that one already so I don't know how many that is. Which is your favourite place? That one's easy, um, Jamaica. And obviously that's a bit of a biased answer because that's where my family originates from. Yeah, but I love that country. Beautiful island, beautiful weather, people, the music, the food. Just, you can't be anywhere else. It's just a shame it's so far away because that 10 hour flight kills me every time. What is your favorite music or song? I don't think I have a favorite music. I listen to a bit of everything. I like dance, pop, a bit of rock. Hip hop, R&B, soul, a bit of old school, garage, bass line, house, slow jams, reggae, dancehall, bashman, lovers rock, revival, Motown, you name it, I like it. As long as it's got a bit of bass in it, then I'm good. I don't really have favourite songs because they change like month to month, but at the moment I'm listening to... Jump in the What are your hobbies? Well, because of my health condition, I get chronic fatigue syndrome, which just means I'm very tired all of the time. So by the time I've been to work, I don't really have the energy to do much else but come home and sleep. But on my days off, or when I've got the energy, I like to do the normal things like go to the cinema, restaurants, concerts, Oh yeah, I make YouTube videos in my spare time as well. Mainly I just like to relax and spend time with my family. Do I have a job? Yes, I do. I am what's called an ODP or Operating Department Practitioner, but not many people know what that is. So I normally describe it as it's similar to being a nurse, only I'm specialized to work in operating theaters. Now there's three main areas that we work in. There's surgery, anesthetics, and recovery. So in anesthetics, we assist the doctor in putting patients to sleep. Then in surgery, we um, assist the surgeon to make sure we've got the tools and stuff that he needs and make sure that we've got counts of swabs and instruments and anything that could be left behind in the patient. And in recovery, we look after the patient until they're ready to go back to the ward. So making sure they're not in pain, making sure they're clean and dry, their dressings are still intact, making sure they're alert and awake and know where they are and stuff and orientated. And I love my job. Although it is hard work, it can be very rewarding as well. Do I have any pets? No, 
don't have any pets. I used to have a cat when I was a child. Yeah, that cat was like my little baby. Who was my first best friend? I'm gonna go ahead and say my sister as we're only 18 months apart, so she had to be my first best friend, I suppose. When you was a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? When I was little, I wanted to be a teacher. I'm one of the eldest out of my cousins. During our school holidays when our parents were at work, we all used to go to our nans. I used to give them work to do as if we were at school. I think they were hating me for it, but yeah, I used to pretend to be the teacher. Up until I was about 13, when I was diagnosed with my health condition, and I was always in and out of hospital. I think that's when I knew I was gonna work in health somewhere along the lines, which I did. What were your favorite stroke worst subjects at school? So my favourite subject was maths, science and geography and my worst was English. What sports have you or do you play? I don't play any sports at the moment because I have bad joints which doesn't allow me to do that. Although I have recently taken up swimming because it's the only thing I can do that doesn't hurt. When I was younger I used to play hockey, rounders, netball, but I think basketball is my favourite and I used to play basketball with the boys because none of the girls used to play. How would I describe my dress sense? I don't know, um, comfortable? practical yeah whatever I'm most comfortable in at the time I won't wear something if I'm not comfortable in it what phone do you have iOS versus Android well I'm using um, an Android at the minute my Galaxy S7 Edge I have had iPhones in fact I still got one but I only use it for music because I can't use it unless it's plugged in which kind of defeats the object of having a mobile yeah the battery doesn't work on it so it has to constantly stay plugged in and it's over there so I will say that iPhones are good if you got other Apple products like I have a MacBook Pro and it's good for transferring files from one to another because it's a bit more complicated to do it with your Android although you can. So until Apple come up with a better battery for their iPhones I won't be getting another one. Do you have bad habits? Of course I do, who doesn't? I think my worst two are actually um, connected. The first one is being late. Although I try not to be, I'm always late and I'm I really can't help it. I think it's genetic, it must be, because there's no other explanation. I even set my alarm purposely early to, so that I can be on time for things and still manage to be late. I don't know how that works. And the other one is speeding, and that's because I'm late all the time. I'm trying to get better at that, actually, because I've got too many points on my license and because it's dangerous. So yeah, I'm trying to get better at those things. Who are your favorite celebrities? don't really follow celebrities like that but probably have to say Usain Bolt I just love his character his personality he seems so down to earth the other two are Beyonce and Michelle Obama Beyonce she works so hard she puts so much effort into what she puts out her creations and you never see anything negative about her in the press that's probably because she controls what goes out but nevertheless she's good at what she does the same goes for Michelle Obama no matter what people throw at her she always returns with something positive I like that about her your favorite actor my favorite actor is Samuel L Jackson favorite film I don't really have a favorite film I have favorite types of films so probably action I like action films action straight thrillers but I tend to watch things with certain people in them like I like Jason Statham I like Liam Neeson back in the day I used to like Steven Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme Jet Li but it has to be realistic action it can't be just unrealistic if you've seen Bad Boys 2 that scene on the Miami Bridge that was good good action film that was I can't recall other films off the top of my head but I'm sure there's loads I could mention favorite TV shows as a child oh gosh probably anything on Nickelodeon so so Marisha, Sister Sister, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Saved by the Bell, One on One, My Wife and Kid, Fresh Prince, you know, all of those types of things. What's your nickname? I don't really have a nickname. My family used to call me Drea Girl, but sometimes still do. So it's like the end part of my name with girl on the end. I think that's from when I was a baby. What am I inspired by? I'm gonna have to say my aspirations or goals in life is what inspires me. I think that's the same with anyone else really. So things that you want to do, you're inspired by because it, it makes you do the things that you're doing right now to get to the point where you want to be, if that makes any sense. Favourite quotes? Well, I have a few. First one is, knowledge is power, and that's self-explanatory. I'm just reading these off my phone, by the way. The second one is, you don't know how to live until you learn how to die. That's from a film that I was watching. I can't remember the name of the film, but I wrote it down because it describes the situation that was in. And basically, when you've had a near-death experience, 
it makes you think of life differently it makes you look at things in a different way to think than you did before never allow someone to be your priority while allowing yourself to be their option so in other words don't put someone first if they're only with you when it's convenient for them and my favorite one is dreams without goals are just dreams and goals can only be achieved with discipline hard work consistency and determination I heard Denzel Washington say this to a group of aspiring actors, but you can apply it to any dream in life. What are your biggest dreams and fears? I don't think I have any out there wild dreams or anything. I suppose just to be happy and healthy because I don't think you can have one without the other. Maybe to be financially free. I would love to design my own home one day. Fears, definitely snakes. Don't know why because I've never encountered a snake. Don't want to. I just know that I'm scared of them. Even when I watch them on TV, you know those wildlife programs, I'm watching it through my fingers like this. I think it's their tongue and the way they move. Just even just thinking about it makes me shiver right now i suppose my other biggest fear is not dying but dying too soon like without doing the things that i want to in life i hope my time comes when i'm like in my 90s or something if i had one wish what would it be this is going to sound really cheesy but i think i would wish for world peace and by that i mean no poverty no hunger no illness no suffering no war no discrimination no crime or abuse basically everybody's born equal what you do with your life after that is up to you and the last question is do you regret anything in your past and knowing what you know now would you go back and change anything i don't regret anything in my past because i believe everything happens for a reason and if it hasn't killed you it's only made you stronger however knowing what i know now i would love to go back to when i was probably i think i was probably about eight or nine i had this one teacher at school that i never got on with i'd have a few words for him i'm not gonna say what but yeah i'd love to give him a piece of my mind <laughs> so that is all of the questions answered finally sorry for the length of this video but if you're still here well done and thank you for watching don't forget to comment like and subscribe for more videos click on that little bell to be notified every time i upload and i'll see you in my next video